Hello everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We have the probes installed from the last video and in this video we are going to wire the probes into the machine controller. Now before we do this let's go down to the office and then we'll first review the schematic of how Renishaw envisions you wiring the probe into the machine and then because I did not buy the two signal conditioning boxes that Renishaw makes for this probe, I'm going to have to build a little tiny brass circuit board and then we'll have to wire in my Compact Rio solution um, that I already have in the machine. So we'll do that and then we'll come back out and we'll look at actually installing the hardware in the electrical cabinet. Our first piece of hardware that we're going to be installing in the machine is a TS27 tool setter. Now the tool setter will allow us to measure our length and diameter offsets of all of our tooling. Then to do the part and work offsets we're going to be using a uh, touch probe and that's going to use an OMM to optically see the probe and figure out when the probe is touched. Now for to hook these two devices up to the machine we need two interface boxes. Uh, the first interface box is specifically needed for the OMM and if you're only doing an OMM you only need this one box and it's called the MI12 and this will receive the serial data from the OMM and then has dry contacts on it to trigger uh, the machine when the probe actually touches. We went over how all of the OMM works in a previous video a couple of weeks ago. The second box you're going to need if you have a tool setter is you're going to need a box called a MI8-4. Now all this does is it reads the dry contact switch of the tool setter, but it also allows you to wire in the output from the MI12 and then use a machine output to select whether you're going to use the tool setter or whether you're going to use the touch probe. So these are the four pieces of equipment that we're going to install in the machine that have to be wired to the controller. So now I made a schematic of how to wire this stuff to the Fidel controller. So up at the top here, this represents the pin connectors on the MI12. So you wire in the OMM to the MI12, pins 1 through 5 here. And then on pins 10 through 24, that's going to be where you wire it to the machine. Now one thing you're going to need is a 24 volt DC supply. Uh, the Fidel controller does not have a 24 volt DC source um, unlike most common industrial electronics equipment you have today. So you will need to get a 120 volt AC to 24 volt DC um, supply to wire in. Then down here this represents the MI8 so you have 24 volts DC again to the MI8-4 and then on this side we need to wire in outputs from the MI12 into the MI8 we wire in the tool setter to pin 2 and 3 and all of this information is in the Renishaw manuals and then pin 7 is an input to the MI8-4 of which probe to use should it read the tool setter probe or should it read these lines to read the MI12, which is your OMM, your touch probe. We also need 24 volts DC here. And then these three pins here go to the machine to trigger the probe. Now I also used some other inputs here. Um, these ones you don't have to use if you don't want to. These ones you do have to use. So let's start at the bottom first. So this connector here is one of the Molex connectors on the backplane board. So this is the 1060 board. It's, a, it's what the card file is actually attached to. And it's in the bottom right hand corner. And what this is, is this is the actual digital input that the machine uses to sense whether or not the probe has triggered or not. Uh, and the signal here gets pulled to ground to indicate that the probe uh, is not touching and then it goes high to indicate that the probe is touching. Um, if you don't have a probe in your machine and you look in the jog screen 
there's a little indicator on the bottom left of the screen that says uh, probe touching, I believe. And this connector, or this input, has a 10,000 ohm, 10K ohm pull-up resistor to 5 volts. So if you put a multimeter on this pin 11 to pin 10, you'll measure 5 volts. And then what will happen is, is this device here pulls it low. Low means it's okay. That way if this wire breaks, it will always say your probe's touching and you won't crash your probe. So this is the input to the machine that says probe touched, okay? And a high equals it's touching and it's pulled up. Now the next connector that we're gonna need if we're using a tool setter is we're gonna need the probe select. And the probe select is accomplished by using M code 64 and M65. And that will select whether or not you're gonna use the tool setter or the OMM. Now this is found on the uh, 111 or the 1100 board dash one. Uh, that is the board that is just above the card file on the left hand side. It's the one with all the solid state relays and fuses on it. Uh, now be careful, there's 120 volts on that board. Now what you will need is you will need a 5B module uh, DC solid state relay um, to put in there to then wire in the 24 volts so that you can then trigger this um, input into the MI8-4. And again, you use six, M64 and M65 to turn that output on and off. Okay, and this is on terminal block two, pins 35 and 36. So that's where you wire that. The next one, and these ones are the mandatory ones, is also on the 1100-1 terminal block 2, this time pins 20 and 19. And this is the probe start signal. So this signal is used to turn the probe on and off, and that is M66 and M67. And what you do is you pulse M66 on for a little bit and then turn it off and the, that will turn the probe on, and then you pulse it again and that will turn the probe off. Okay, uh, And that gets wired in to the MI12 pin 21. Okay, so these are the mandatory connections to everything. This one up here is optional, but this one's nice to have. Um, and what this is, is this is an input for um, macros. Now, you can write the macro to read these inputs, and these are just auxiliary digital inputs. Now, these are on a 20, I think it's a 26 pin connector. It's on the 1040-2 board. This is a board that's inside the card file. It's the mill interface board. And there is a 0.1 pitch header connector on the, front of the, on the front edge of the card. So that's where this is located. Um, and this has 15K pull-ups on it. So then you wanna pull these down um, to you know, signal them. Now what I did here is I wired these ones into the error signal from the MI12 and from the low battery indicator. So now you can write your probing scripts where after you receive a touch signal from the touch probe, you can check to see if the error bit is set. So the error bit will get set if the touch probe goes behind the part and it loses connectivity to the probe. When that happens, the OMM will signal that the probe touched because it lost connection to it. So it doesn't know if it touched or not. So the safest thing to do is say, yes, it touched, so it stops the machine movement. So by interrogating this error bit, you can tell if it was a real touch and the probe is okay, or if it was a false touch and that there was an error during that touch. And then you can take corrective actions inside your macro with this input. Uh, the battery input's nice to have because then you can uh, display a warning to the user that the battery's getting low uh, when you go to use the probe. So this is, you know, extra credit wiring uh, and usage if you so choose. But that's about it for the um, wiring of the probe. Now as I discussed in the previous videos, I had a hard time finding an MI12 and an MI8 for what I felt was a reasonable cost. So I'm gonna use a separate piece of hardware and mimic the operation of the MI12 and MI8. Um, in order to do that though, I've gotta do a little bit of work here now, this looks a little bit messier than the normal hookup, and that's because I'm doing a, a little bit extra work here. But everything is identical to the last one. So we've got the, 
the probe touch status on J12 on the 1060, that's the backplane board, just like normal. I did my extra credit stuff here, um, just like normal. And then here are the probe start and probe select pins, um, just like the other one. Now here, I'm not using the MI8 or MI12. I'm using another piece of hardware that's going to be wired in here. And this is going to be a circuit board that I will build. And I'm actually going to sh I'll show a little bit of the video uh, building this board here um, that I needed to add a little bit of circuitry to help this interface work. Uh, so the OMM requires a 10 volt DC uh, voltage rail. The Fidel has a 12 volt voltage rail. So this is a 10 volt regulator. So it's going to take 12 volts give out a regulated 10 volt um, power source to drive the OMM and that will power the OMM. And then the OMM just gets wired straight into our extra cooker device here that we're using. It's a compact reel from National Instruments. It's already in the machine. I'm just gonna add two modules to it to allow me to do this. Uh, and then because of the way that the signal levels and the hardware on the compact reel is done, I had to add a couple of diodes and these diodes will make it so that I don't accidentally reverse feed the 5 volts coming from this system into the 5 volt bus of the machine. Um, just a little bit of extra protection. You could use resistors or, you know, I just, I just preferred to use a couple of diodes. Uh, and then here, instead of actually putting a solid state relay in here, I'm going to put pins inside the sockets where the relay would normally plug in and just take off, these are five volt signals. So pin three plus is always tied to plus five volts. And then pin four is open collector. So it will pull the ground or float. Uh, so I put a 1K resistor in here so that I can detect uh, when it's pulling up and down. And then these are just gonna be wired into digital inputs on this guy over here. Um, same thing with the tool setter probe. So he's gonna be wired in here and he just gets a pull-up resistor to five volts. So I'm pulling five volts off of this guy. Uh, and then he'll go five volts ground as the probe uh, opens and closes. So when the probe is at rest and not touching anything, it's a normally closed device. So then this line will be pulled low. And then when the probe gets touched, it opens, then the 1K will pull this line high and then that will trigger that the tool setter touched. Um, so all the connections are exactly the same on the machine side and I'm still you know using an OMM and the TS27 it's just I replace this center piece here this custom piece here replaces the MI12 uh, and MI8-4 so that's what I'm doing differently with my wiring here so we'll review a little bit of the video of me uh, making this circuit board. Uh, if you're interested in that, um, I just did a, a wire brass board.
Now that we have our schematics completed and we know how we want to wire everything, we are at the machine cabinet. So this is the rear electronics bay again. Uh, you'll recognize this from past videos. So we need a place to mount all of our hardware and then we have to figure out some wire routing and you know I want to install this nice and then I'm also going to do some cleanup work. If you remember back maybe almost a year ago now I did a video on how I interface my older machine with uh, modern day storage. I use this little compact Rio it's called. It's just been sitting in the cabinet that whole time on the bottom and I'd like to actually mount this now along with everything else because I'm actually going to use this as my probe interface. Now looking around the cabinet, you know, there's lots of ways you can mount this. You know, we could drill some holes and pretty much put it wherever you want. I really hate drilling holes in, you know, electronics cabinets. There's almost no way to guarantee that you won't leave some fod in there, you know, foreign object debris. And, you know, I just assume avoid that if possible. So in this cabinet already, there are four studs over on this side on this nice empty big blank wall and then here are the two cables the gray ones the OMM and the black ones the TS27 tool setter so I figure what better place to mount everything than right here so I just screwed some nuts on these studs to space them off so it puts some space and then what we'll do is we'll take a piece of sheet metal and then drill it to match these studs and then we can bolt that sheet metal there and then we can bolt the compact reel there and then we can also uh, attach the brass board uh, that we made earlier. I have our piece of sheet metal made up. I, I just made this off camera. Um, it's really simple. I just transfer punched the holes from the compact reel, the circuit board, and then I carefully measured the holes for those studs. I don't know if I didn't measure it square or if those studs aren't attached square. So I, I oversized drilled these holes a little bit. Uh, more than adequate though. So this uh, installs nicely on our studs, nice and easy. So then that will go there and now we can, you know, securely fasten this plate into the cabinet. And then I've already got the holes drilled so we'll mount the compact Rio down on the bottom like this. And that mounts nicely. And then our circuit board, I mounted four holes here and our circuit board will go up on top. So then I think what I'll do is I'm gonna make another loop with these wires. Normally I don't like to leave a lot of wire in electrical cabinets because it can get overwhelming quick and nine times out of 10 you don't need it. Uh, but seeing how these run into the machine cabinet, I'd like to leave quite a bit of extra if possible. So I'm going to route these wires down the front side of the cabinet, across the bottom of the cabinet, and then I'm going to come back up this inside corner uh, and then in. So I'm going to kind of make a loop around the thing. Uh, that way I'll get a nice, nice amount of spare wire in case for some reason I want to wire something up to the other side of the cabinet in the future. We can do that. And then the, uh, the machine interface wires will come off of the top of the circuit board and then come down that inside corner uh, down to the processor boards and then make our connections that we discussed when we reviewed the schematics. So let me get, uh, let me get all the hardware mounted on this sheet and then uh, see how it looks in there.
completed the wiring of just between our circuit board and our compact Rio here. Uh, now remember, this is replacing those two Renishaw boxes. So in between wiring it, I did that last night and then I came out in the morning to do this video, this part of the video, and this thing already flash rusted. I just used a piece of plate steel. So I decided, eh, you know, if you're gonna do something, you might as well do it right. So I took it apart and painted it. So now it's the next day, paint's dry, and we'll bolt this into the machine. So there's our mounting. So now we can start wiring, you know, the probe wires into this upper board. And then uh, all of these, so this is the OMM connector. That's the TS27 connector. And then this upper connector here is the, all the machine interface cables. So now we will start wiring this into the machine and then that will complete our installation once we have that done. This is the J12 connector. It is on the lower right hand corner of the backplane board. Now this bottom row here, these three empty sockets that you see there, that is where the probe switch signal goes. Uh, so we need to disconnect this connector and then I ordered some pins to go in here and we're going to have to insert additional pins for our probe trigger input. going to hook up the interface to the machine's outputs a little differently than you normally would. So this board is the 1100 board and this board basically contains a bunch of solid state relays and some mechanical relays to turn stuff on and off. Uh, the coolant pump uh, relay I believe goes through this and a couple of other things. Now normally you would put a solid state relay in one of these slots and these two little pins on the side uh, trigger the solid state relay. Normally you put like a opto isolator or something like that, a little LED that will then turn on a higher voltage or a higher current switch. So these could actually drive 120 volts, which some of them do, or it could drive 24 volts, you know, or 12 or five or, you know, whatever you hook up to this and whatever module. These little modules just unplug, okay, and you can buy these bricks, and you can buy various, you know, versions of them. So plug that back in. Now, because we're using the Compact Rio with a 5-volt digital input module, these are actually 5-volt terminals. So this pin right here on this side, towards the center, is plus 5 volts all the time. It's connected to the 5-volt supply. 
And then this pin on the outside here, this little pin on the outside, that one's connected um, to the machine controller through what they call an open collector output. So this will get tied to ground when the machine wants to turn this output on. So because of that, we can just wire directly from here to the compact Rio, and I can skip getting a solid state relay and the propagation delay and all that good jazz. So the way I'm gonna do that is I just took a, I took a wire and I carefully soldered, whoops, I carefully soldered uh, two pins to the end of the wire uh, that are the exact same diameter as the pins um, on these, you know, relay modules. And then what we'll be able to do, and then I put a, I put a little sticky on the board right here, right next to it. So then what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to just plug these right in to those pins. And there's like a little, it's it's like a socket. It's almost like an outlet socket. So there's there's some friction in there that will keep the pins in place. So we can plug that in, just like that, all the way. And then we'll bring this up here and then put a zip tie there. So we got strain, whoops, can't see it. We'll put a zip tie here, so then we've got strain relief. So these will be plugged into the board. That will give us our strain relief so these won't pop out. I mean, you gotta pull on these pretty pretty hard um, to get them to come out. So they're not gonna vibrate out on their own. Um, you know, these, these modules aren't retained by anything but friction anyway. Um, so I think this will be a good method, uh, good safe method to get the signal from the machine controller uh, into our compact Rio without having to go through a solid state relay. Just, you know, saves a couple of bucks uh, and it's, you know, easy. So that's what we're gonna do. Here's the final product. There's our install there. And then we also did some cleanup work in here. If you remember, our little compact Rio box was laying on the floor over here. So we put that up on the wall too. And then we also put in a little wall mount ethernet jack. So now our ethernet actually has a bulkhead connector on it. And then we ran this piece of Ethernet cable down through, and then uh, all of the uh, wiring that we added. So we added this guy, we added pins over here, all that's routed down here, and then comes up the side corner there, real nice. And then we also had to add jumpers into here, and then down there, and then all those wires come up real nice and then into the top of our board. And then here's our tool setter and OMM interface. And then that comes down to our compact Rio, which is running the code and it's all tested and works. Now I did run into one issue. These two wires here were the grounds connecting to the digital input module here. Um, this module is supposed to be a differential input well, apparently it's pseudo differential so it did not want the grounds attached for some reason so I, I had to disconnect those so that's one change to the schematic that I'll have to make so here's a demonstration on how I have everything set up to work and this pretty much follows the exact way that Fidel was intending it to work so we didn't deviate on the operation so we'll, we'll go into manual input mode now, if you want to use the tool setter, you just do an M65 
and now it will tell the system to use the tool setter probe. So if we go into jog mode, we'll see that we get a not touching signal. And then if I touch the tool setter, you can see it indicates whether it's touching or not. So that's the tool setter, pretty simple. So let's go back into manual input mode. Now if I want to use the spindle touch probe, first I have to select it. So that's an M64. So we'll do an M64. Now it's not going to work yet because it's not turned on. I have to send it a signal to turn it on. So to do that, it's M66, M66. Now the touch probe is on. If we go back into jog, we can see that again, the probe is not touching. And then this time, if I touch the spindle probe, you'll get touch, not touch. So now it's looking at the spindle probe. If I touch the tool setter, nothing happens. It's just the spindle probe uh, that's active right now. So that's the basic operation of, of the entire system. So here's the changes to the schematic that I had to make um, regarding the 9411 and the grounding. Um, so pin 2 still comes from the tool setter. So this guy's coming from the tool setter. Now originally pin 10 was connected to ground, which is this guy. So that got disconnected from pin 10 and that wire got moved to pin 12. So pin 12 is the common on the 9411 and that is now going to ground. Then the other thing that we had to do is the yellow and green and yellow and black wires um, which were originally uh, coming from the plus 5 volts and going into the 9411. So those are completely disconnected. So now what happens is this line down here on the bottom side of this 1K when the machine energizes its open collector this gets pulled to ground. So when the machine is turned off this line is high. When the machine is tur it turns this output on this line gets pulled to ground which is low. So then this line is the line that gets moved. It got moved up to the high side input of the 9411 and then again the low sides are just left floating. That's uh, pins 10, 11, and 13. So these are just floating. Uh, and, and that worked. And this is all in the manual for the 9411 from National Instruments. I just overlooked it. Well that's going to wrap up our probe installation uh, videos. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the mechanical installation and now the electrical wiring and hookup. The next videos that we'll do on the probes we have to set up each probe and then dial it in, do a calibration on it, and then we can start using it. And then to start using it, we need to go over the macros. And I think what I'm going to do is not only try to go over the Renishaw macros, but also the built-in Fidel macros. Uh, those may be you know, good enough for a lot of people. They're, they're pretty good. So we'll go over both of those macros. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it again, and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.